Hello and welcome, my friends, to another stream of Adobe Live. I'm your host, Kieran Lewis, a designer from London, England. And today's stream, we have illustrator, graphic designer, Corinne Dondenhoff. Corinne, how are you doing today? I'm good, Kieran. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to see your design process, see your flow. Thank you. I'm excited to show it to you. It's going to be awesome. Um, our folks are coming in the chat, as always. Um, Hello, my friends. Hello to Jack, to Wade, Robert, Oliver. Um, as always, any, any comments you have for Corinne while she's in design process, if you're on YouTube, Behance, share the love, let us know. We've got the link below um, and I'll make sure I share those comments directly with Corinne. Um, and on a final note, don't forget to subscribe, my friends, to Adobe Live. Um, there you can sort of know about the community, follow the latest streams, updates, and so much more. Um, so Corinne, would you like to introduce yourself to uh, our lovely audience? I would. So my name is Corinne Dodenhoff. I am a graphic designer, illustrator, muralist, um, fine artist, educator, consultant, kind of all around general creative type living in Philadelphia. Um, I'm nice. joined today by my dog in the background. His Yay. name is <laughs> his name is Moose. <laughs> he will be watching. Um, not really. He's that. blind, but he'll be up. Uh, He'll sense he'll be, it. He'll get the vibe. He'll be my he'll emotional be support animal. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so that's a little bit about me. I would love to show you a little of my work here. And if you yeah, would like to see of it. Course, cool. Of course. I thought you never asked, Corinne. I, love <laughs> <laughs> I think my, my work um, says a lot about who I am more so than I could say with words. So I'll just show it to you. Um, so this is my website. There's There's me. And then most of my clients these days are... Uh, graphic design clients who I do brand identities for. So these are a lot of the clients that I have worked with over the last year. Um, as you can see, my style is really punchy, really colorful, very bold. I love fonts and typography. So shout out Adobe Fonts because it's where I get all the good stuff. Um, but I also do work with a lot of musicians, um, different web uh, presences throughout the internet, uh, small businesses, kind of all over the map. Uh, and mm. so I'm really excited about what I'm going to be showing you today because yes. it is something that I recommend to every single client, not just my brand identity clients, but clients kind of all across the map. Um, okay. And so, yeah, that's a little bit of me, nice. a little bit of my work. Um, and I can I'm loving the styles as well. The logo, some real retro -y kind of like, especially American mortals. I'm loving that sort of style, almost like Kodak kind of like style. That one was fun. The kind of Bauhaus geometric inspiration yeah. there was was really fun. Um, cool. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing today is something called a digital business card, and I'll tell you a little bit about it. So I've just opened up what we're going to be using to build this on Illustrator, just so everyone knows what we're looking at. But a digital business card is essentially exactly what it sounds like. Let's say you're walking out and around in the world and you you never know where you're going to meet your next client, essentially. Mm. So let's say you're walking around. My name's Corinne Dodenhoff, not exactly easy to spell or remember. And I happen to have forgotten my business cards that day. And someone and I get to talking and they are like, oh, do you have a business card? And surprise, surprise, I left them in my other purse. So no, I don't. Mm. Instead of losing that client or trying to spell my name or taking the time out to pull up my Instagram, which is my name, then I have something at the ready on my phone that I can just show to a potential client that mm. will then direct them to my website or something similar. Um, and so, nice. yeah, so it's really helpful for creatives, both in terms of an asset that you can use for your own personal business, as I mm. do, and as I did in that example. But it's also something that you can include in your service offerings, because a lot of clients aren't thinking about digital business cards. They're not, you know, in the digital space necessarily, at least not um, a lot of my clients aren't. So mm. it's just something that you can offer for, you know, if you're doing a brand identity package or even for an event, um, event coordinators, anything across the map needs some sort of digital marketing tool like this. So I'm really excited to show you and kind of like get into it. Nice. I can see as well, folks, so, uh, everyone's sort of popping in the chat as we're just kind of going through. So uh, yeah, I think everyone's excited to sort of see your design style and one thing I noticed as well from your website and even now is like I feel like typography is I don't want to jump ahead of myself but typography seems like a big part of 
like you said, kind of what you do, which is a uh, yeah, we love a type at Adobe Live. So uh, oh. spoil us, spoil us all the way. We're good for it. <laughs> Excellent. So you'll love this then. Um, Illustrator is my bread and butter. So that's what we're going to be using today. Um, and something that I want to update on my digital business card, which is what I'm going to be building today is one for me because my old one is very outdated. Um, it's kind of using some older brand colors that I'm not using as much of anymore. Um, something that I want to update on there is the fact that I have a custom font that I created using Adobe Illustrator that I now mm. use on most of my client facing materials. So I'm really excited to kind of implement that today um, nice. and see how it looks. But yeah. yeah. So That's hi, awesome. everyone who's joining up. My name again is Corinne Dodenhoff. This is my personal branding that I've pulled up. And so the first thing I'm going to do when I am making a digital business card is pull up all of the brand assets that I'm going to be working with. So ideally, like in an ideal world, you either have a brand guide that has been created, and certainly I make those for clients all the time, or you have a document like this that has all of your colors in it. Um, I also have a swatch library that's got my colors in it, which I can, um, I think I also might update just because um, like I said, some of those colors are outdated. Mm. So I've got my colors, I've got my symbols, my brand marks and word marks. And just in case there are people tuning in who don't necessarily know what those words mean, I'll go over them really quickly. So in brand identity, a word mark is the words that you are seeing when you read a logo. So in this case, it says Corinne Dodenhoff. So you're thinking of something like Coca-Cola or Google, where those words and that font and that typography is really strong and powerful and memorable. Mm. And then you are also looking at brand marks, which are pictorial elements of a brand identity. So think of the Apple Apple or the Nike swoosh, something that represents the brand without using words is called a brand mm. mark. I use four of them to create my logo and a word mark. And so that's what I've got pulled up. I've got a bunch of different layouts here. As you can see, I've got some horizontal, I've got some vertical. And what I'm going to do is just pull that open, make sure that everything is good to go. And then I'm going to mm. create a new document. Right. A quick question. I'm curious because I guess like on those first or on those four visuals we can see, you can kind of tell a lot about a person's kind of vibe and energy, right? Through the style of the illustration, whether it's like hand drawn, whether it's kind of neat around the edges and I guess almost playfulness. That's the kind of energy I get from Thank your style, you. almost like tongue in cheek. But I, I could be wrong. Is that the kind of style that you Oh no, that's wanna... right. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll be very open <laughs> to doing that. Um yeah. I can see in the uh, comments in the chat we've got um yeah, we've got Michelle who said typography. Did someone say typography? So uh <laughs> there we go. We've got some folks happy and uh we've got one question for you actually, Corin, from uh from YouTube. Um and they've asked, how do you uh, price your work usually? Ooh, pricing is tough. Um, I usually base my projects package rate on my hourly rate. So I charge what my hours would be for that project. And then I also consider uh, tax and I also consider return on investment. So for instance, brand identity, you are going to be getting a lot of use out of that product that I'm creating for you. And so I mm. price it in accordance with how much use uh, a client will be getting. I also work sliding scale. So that's something that's really personal to me. Um, so if there are clients who aren't as high on the income level, I can kind of work with them because I'm working with clients that are willing to pay higher rates. So that's something that's also really important to me. Nice. Hopefully yeah. for whoever that uh, awesome question was, uh, I hope it answers your question. And again, any more comments, please do get us in the flow, get us in the chat whilst I share them with, uh, with yeah. Karen. So yeah, excited to see it. Yeah. And definitely tongue in cheek, this typography, um, well, this is custom this is custom type so this is a, a word mark that i drew um mm. and i definitely very playful very retro inspired but not overtly so uh kind mm. of still modern and contemporary i mean hopefully that was that's the goal yeah the vibe. so <laughs> I'm, loving the, uh, I'm loving i'm loving the shape the d shape as well i don't know why i'm getting a uh, i hope it's not too out there but like, almost like austin powers vibe i don't know what it oh, is I love like that. Uh, the very flares right yeah, <laughs> that's it yeah flare. i'm liking it very Thank cool. you. So, okay, I'm going to make a new document and we're going to get into it. Now, I could use a mobile 
um, size, a preset size uh, from Adobe Illustrator. They do give you a bunch of options, but what I'm going to do, because in an ideal world, this business card can be airdropped to somebody. It can be shown to somebody and they can scan a QR code. It can be saved mm. to their phone. So there should be a lot of options and you never really know what size phone someone else is going to have. So I generally just stick, uh, stick to like a nine by 16 pixel ratio um, oh. and just kind of give myself breadth on the sides of a margin just in case. But that is... Mm that's the size that I'm going to start with. So I'm going to do, oh, it looks like mm. I already had it up and ready. And I think I just need one artboard to start. I want to make sure that I am at 72 PPI and using RGB color because I'm designing nice. for screen. And so there we go. That's quite a nice bit to mention as well, especially for those who are quite new to this space and watching for the first I'm thinking oh why is it got to be 72 dpi uh, sorry yeah. ppi do you want to explain maybe for those that are different yeah. the 300 and the, for anyone who's quite new to that space yeah so mm -hmm. when you are designing for screen you are going to be using either 72 ppi or I believe it's 140 for sort of a higher res ppi I tend to mm. stick with 72 it's just going to keep the file size down 300 ppi is what you want to use when you are working with print materials because nice. you're going to be holding those physically and they just need to be a lot higher resolution in order to um, kind of get a lot of the details and the crispness you'll notice that if you save something uh, that you designed at a size in a different size that you might get some uh, blowing out of the pixels. It might look really wacky. Mm. So just keeping that in mind when you are designing um, something new, making sure that when you get your document set up, you're remembering I'm doing this for print or I'm doing this for screen uh, because that is gonna sort of determine not just the size of the document itself, but also what color mode you're working in. So if it's for nice. screen, I'm using RGB, red, green, blue. And if it's for print, I'm using CMYK. And those colors are also going to be different depending on what color mode you're in. So just nice. some things to be aware of. Some gems for those who are quite new to the design space. There we go. You heard it from Corinne first. <laughs> you heard it here first, DPI. folks. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I am looking at my digital business card and I'm appraising it. In this is something that isn't necessarily, this is the part that is a little bit trickier to teach, right? Because there are, of mm. course, graphic design basics and principles, and I will totally touch on some of those. But practice really does make perfect when you are getting into the graphic design space, um, just trying a bunch of different options, seeing what flows best, seeing what breathes the most, um, seeing what feels the most balanced. Adobe Illustrator mm. makes it really easy and something that I heard from um, a designer I very much respect, Aaron Draplin, is vectors are free. And Adobe Illustrator makes it so easy to duplicate vectors. So just give yourself a lot of options mm. when you're playing around. But this part is the trickier part to kind of describe because what I'm doing is in my head, I'm imagining, okay, what happens if I put the logo at the top and then a QR code at the bottom? Or what if I mm. put the logo at the bottom and the QR code in the middle. So sort of just envisioning where I want to place my elements. And what I might do mm. is I might just make up some quick, real quick wireframes. And I'm just using the rectangle mm. tool to do this, dragging things out to kind of see where I might want certain shapes to live um, and building it out that way. I'm thinking... I think there's some great points you mentioned because I think as well, you never know. It's almost like the way um, as humans, our eyes kind of travel down the screen or even on the page, like, which elements do you go to first? I guess the yeah, hierarchy, right. right? So uh, yeah, it's all sorts of what you're doing. I think what I want to do is make a patterned background with three individual boxes that are going to house different sets of information. So that is my game plan. And I am going to just really quickly make some boxes. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to divide this into a grid. This is a feature of Illustrator that I absolutely love. So I've got a rectangle here. 
and mm. I'm going to align it to the center, vertical and horizontally. And then I'm going to go to object, path, and split into grid. I love this feature. It makes designing nice. things so easy. And what I'm going to do is I want three rows and I want a gutter in those rows. So I'm going to click preview. I'm going to do three rows, three evenly sized boxes, and then I'm going to give it a little bit of a gutter. Mm. And there we go. So this is what I'm envisioning in my head. And it doesn't look like much right now, but things never do at the beginning, right? Of and course. so my it's start somewhere, right? <laughs> it's start somewhere. <laughs> what I'm going to do is focus my logo more on this box, the QR code in this box, and then some information mm. up in here. And I want to just see how that looks first. I am going to play around. So first thing I'm going to do is drag some, well, I guess that's the second thing I'm going to do. I already did the first thing. I'm going to click and copy one of my logos in here and just copy and paste it. And here just it a question, Corinne, whilst you're yeah. in the flow of that, when you were sort of creating the, your kind of watermark, your logo, are you, uh, what's your kind of like, I guess, tools? Are you pen tool? Are you kind of using a tablet? Like, are you mouse drawing it first and then scanning it in? What's your... Uh, what's my process crossword? like? Yeah. Um, so for this logo, I believe that I drew everything. I sketched it out by hand first on graph paper, and then I mm. did it in Procreate. And then I brought it into Illustrator and cleaned it up using the pencil tool and also just messing around with my curves and my um, my anchor points. Um, so that was that was that. And the same thing for the brand marks. Like I wanted them to feel hand drawn. Like you'll see mm -hmm. if you zoom in this, especially the squiggle has some um, rougher nice. edges to give it sort of a more textured feel. Um, but I also wanted it to feel extremely clean and fresh and modern. And so I think the most easy way to do that is to just make sure you're not using too many points or just making sure things are really smooth and crisp. Mm. Okay, so I'm thinking here and I'm going to drag in all of them and not just the word mark and copy and paste and see how that feels. Okay, so now I have these assets in the document. I'm just gonna leave them here on the side of my artboard. And then as I mentioned, for anyone who's just joining um, who maybe didn't hear mm. this part before, but I do have a swatch library um, that I use um, that needs to be updated. So I think I might do that. And the way that I do it, and I've just always done it this way, is to delete all the swatches that I'm that are currently in the swatch panel, um, mm -hmm. and then select what colors I want in my new whoop, in my new uh, swatch little library. That's just going to be for my branded elements. And what I might do actually quickly is just make some squares of color. That'll be easy. So one, two, nice. the little, paint gonna... little paint pockets. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> just make it easy for myself to see the colors mm. all together because this is a pink that I'm no longer using. I'm actually using this pink. So just little things like that. I want to make sure that mm. I am getting all of my colors together a quick question as well actually i don't know if it's a bit out there but like with the order of your um kind of imagery is that is that for consistency so you whether it's horizontal or vertical you're always going to have your visuals in that particular order yeah okay yeah. cool nice. yeah so generally i am using either this logo um with that's horizontal that has the four assets next to it that's what i use on my website sometimes it'll just be one and i have an animated uh, gif where this changes from one two three four that's always fun um, i won't be using that on the digital business card because sometimes gifs don't play very well on other people's phones and mm. so i just want to be mindful of that but um, mm. i do use an animated version of my logo as well um, but yeah sometimes all four live in the same time and sometimes it's just one that kind of rotates through but nice. in any case i want to make sure that like 
things are staying very consistent because that's how you really build a strong brand identity, which is mm. my whole bread and butter. Um, it's just that consistency, that repetition is sure. really helpful. So what I'm going to do is select all of the colors that I just put together and I'm going to save swatch library as ASE. And so I access that by on the swatches panel here, clicking the little hamburger and going down to save swatch library as ASE. It's going to ask me to name the file. So I'm just going to name it updated color palette. And as you can see from these files, I have a lot of client color palettes saved in here. <laughs> um, nice. I like to keep my client color palettes just because you never know when you're going to need them. Uh, I could delete them, but I'm not going to. So now if I jump over to this document, I can see that this pink is no longer the pink that I want to be using. So I'm going to jump into this swatch panel, open swatch library, mm. user defined, and then updated color palette. And then, oh, I forgot to save the colors. That's the most important part. So I right click, I think how do I usually do this? We can see oh, some right. folks as well in the chat. We've just kind of threw out there where folks are tuning in from. And uh, you've literally got pretty much the entire globe uh, from different corners oh. all tuning in today. We've got uh, Michelle from Netherlands, Rob from Sweden, Monica from Toronto, Paolo, oh. uh, Paolo from Brazil, Philadelphia. I mean, literally the time zones are in one chat. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, I feel <laughs> like some of you us. are either up very early or very late. Yeah. But I appreciate you for being here. Thank it's like you. having breakfast or dinner either way, but you've joined us today. So we appreciate yeah. it. And again, comments, get those in the chat. We would love to love to hear it. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, I'm going to go with these colors selected back to my swatch panel hamburger and go to new color group. Name color group one. That's fine. And it's just going to ask me create from selected swatches or selected artwork. I'm just going to hit selected artwork and hit okay and then there my colors are and then now i'm going to save it i forgot to do that before so i'm just going to resave over the document i just made updated color palette and it's going to ask me if that's fine it is so now jumping back into this document this digital business card document i'm going to open my swatch library go to user defined open it up and there are all the colors that nice. I just pulled from the other document. So now I don't even need to toggle back and forth between those because all the colors are right here. And I can see that this pink is incorrect. So I'm just going to correct that. I am going to select all my yellows in the document by just clicking A, the direct select tool, and then making sure that this object is highlighted. Um, and this is yellow. And what I have set on my computer is a shortcut to select all items with the same fill color because I use that feature of mm. Adobe Illustrator a lot. But nice. if you don't have a, that as a shortcut key, you can always go to select same fill color. And it's going to select everything here that is the same yellow. And I just I want to be extra mm. sure that everything is consistent. There's no discrepancies. And I'm going to do the same for the orange. And I love that you uh, wow. kind of mentioned that the shortcuts because you almost forget, I guess, as designers, we kind of get lost in our in our ways. But in shortcuts our flow. make life so much, so much like more streamlined, though, once you know the kind of ins and outs. And I guess that's for anyone who's quite new to these programs. It's just the more you kind of practice, the more you pick up on these uh, little shortcuts. It makes life so much easier, no? Oh, absolutely. And I have found for me that a lot of it is very personal um, because the features that I love about Adobe Illustrator are not necessarily what other people are using most mm. frequently. Everyone, it's such a powerful program that everybody kind of has the ability to use it differently and get mm. similar or the same results from, you know, different methods. And so if you're somebody who likes to hand draw a lot of the time, maybe you have shortcuts for the pencil and smooth tool. If you're somebody who's building a lot of shapes, maybe you have a shortcut for the shape builder tool, whatever it is, I found myself constantly just going to select <laughs> same fill color, select same, you know, uh, type family and I was like, I'm just going to make shortcuts for these and it's... <laughs> just make your life easier. Right. And just, yeah. Why not? Right. Just make my life a little easier. 
So I've got kind of a general look at how I want to structure out the business card. And that's all well and good. And now it's time to actually get into the build. So I'm going to delete those three rectangles that were kind of my placeholders. I know what I want to do now. And we're going to just go for it and see how it looks. And I nice. think what I might do is split up the brand marks, put those at the top, put the word mark at the bottom. So there's some brand continuity in there, some information, mm -hmm. and I'm going to generate a QR code. And so what I would really like to do in my dream world is <laughs> to create a patterned background. And so I'm going to do that and I'll show you how. Oh. So I'm going to click my brand marks and something that you'll know notice about the way that I design is I really try very hard not to delete anything. Like I said before, mm. vectors are free. So what I'm going to do is just select my brand marks. I'm going to hit option and just duplicate them. So now what I can do is play around with these elements, change some colors, resize some things to make my pattern uh, without mm. disrupting the way that I have the brand mark set up here. So I am going to do just that. I'm going to make things a little smaller. In my head, the background of the pattern will be this black color, well, this like off black gray color. And mm. so I just want to see how it will look with different, a different flower color. And I think that looks great. So what I'm going to do is select I love all... that. Um, I, was like, I love that as designers, we almost know in our brains before we even implement sometimes work, we just kind of know the colors that will work. It's almost yeah. like years of just, I guess, practice, right? You can, after a while, you're just have doing idea. the thing. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> Um, I also am somebody who works very fast. Uh, it's something that I find to be very helpful and also can mm. sometimes work to my detriment for sure. <laughs> um, your clients love you for that. <laughs> they do. They definitely yeah. do. Um, <laughs> they love me for working fast, but they also love the output and the quality. Uh, but like, cool. it's just a matter of practicing, um, and kind mm. of getting in your own flow and then just mm. finding that spot where you are in it and you're working and you know all you and you have your shortcuts and you have your nice. shortcuts. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> so when shortcuts, I'm my friends <laughs> always so I'm going to select the items that I want to rearrange to create a pattern and I'm going to go to object pattern make and it's automatically going to select some preset settings for me. Um, it's going to title this as a new pattern. Um, Illustrator is going to immediately put this into a grid format and give me a box, this blue bounding box here around the elements that I've selected uh, to work with. I can change all of this and I'm going to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle this button that says size tile to art. And then when I move these elements, the box, as you'll see, gets bigger or smaller. Mm, nice. And I love that. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with some styles. Like, I, I think this looks cute, but I also want to see what happens if I select, for instance, brick by row. And I think I like that. Yeah, I think I like that, up, right? yeah, yeah, I think I like that a lot happens. better. <laughs> I'm going to make this paint splotch a little smaller. And I'm going to make this flower a little smaller as well, just to give the eye some visual sort of, um, not balance, but what's the opposite of balance? Asymmetry. We just said it before. Yeah. Um, some asymmetry here in different sizes of the elements. So I want the star and the paint to be one large and one small and then the same for the next row that way there's just some more nice. room for your eye to breathe and i'm going to save this as background pattern and then x out of there and i'm going to click done so now in my regular swatches panel not the swatches that are um my color palette just the general adobe mm -hmm. swatches that are is automatically pops up for you you'll see that there's a new little swatch and when i hover over it it says background pattern how exciting is that <laughs> game oh changer. game it. changer 
<laughs> now let's test it out on a background. So using my rectangle tool and funny story about me when I, so I'm completely self-taught. Mm. That's something about me. Oh, is cool. I yeah. did not graduate from college for this. I didn't, I, the only graphic design courses I took in college were graphic design history courses, which I just mm. found fascinating. Um, but I'm completely self-taught in all Adobe programs. And now I teach other people in Adobe programs and definitely streams awesome. like this have been, yeah, have been so mm. helpful. When I first started using Adobe Illustrator, I could not for the life of me figure out how to fill a background color. And it took me so long to just realize that, oh, you just have to make a rectangle. <laughs> Seems yeah. Take it back to paint bucket days, right? I don't know, like where ninety five, like, but what? Yeah. <laughs> but it oh, actually yeah. gives you so much more flexibility than just a flat background color because then mm. you can do things like you know, split up your background into different colors or whatever the case may be. So mm. here's my rectangle, and what I'm gonna do is go to my layers panel. And everything right now is on layer one, which is fine. But moving forward, I want to make sure that my elements that I'm going to put on top of this background are on a separate layer. So I am going to add my pattern in, and then I'm going to lock this layer and create a new one. So I'm going to click whilst my you're uh, doing that i was going to say so because you pretty much read my notes because i was actually quite curious to know about your uh your kind of design background because i think that's the i mean when we have these adobe lives which is awesome it's nice to see the creative designing the work but also knowing the background story behind you know you said you were self-taught which is actually quite refreshing because usually there's always an element oh we went to uni or college or the educational yeah. route but it's refreshing for anyone maybe streaming or watching now i should say and who doesn't really necessarily have the education of it but they're just watching because they're curious like how yeah. you came about so that's yeah awesome to have. yeah it's it was um I mean for anyone who remembers MySpace and the MySpace days <laughs> I oh, would yeah. consider myself a graphic designer then I was doing a lot of custom <laughs> HTML layouts people would pay we were me all back then, weren't we? <laughs> yeah <it's, laughs> we really were um it was a, <laughs> those were heady times very beautiful um so I, I became interested in graphic design and art when I was really young. Uh, mm. I've always been in love with fonts um, and certainly like children's books and all that stuff. Um, and then decided that college wasn't for me. I did try it. I tried a few different fields and it just didn't, mm. it didn't feel aligned with who I was and the way that I create things. So mm. I ended up just teaching myself. Um, I had a mentor when I worked in the fashion industry, um, which was a job that I got by flat out emailing the owners and saying, I want to work for you. And they hired me. Um, nice. It was great. Bold. I love it. <laughs> very bold. I had a mentor there who also helped me a lot. Her name was Nicola. So shout out to her. Um, but for the most part, very self-taught and Adobe Illustrator mm. came after Adobe Photoshop. So hence the background uh, nice. yeah nice. it'd be great to know as well and in the chat if you if you uh if you're if you're self-taught or you're just watching because you, you kind of want to get into the space it's always nice to hear um different you folks can do experience it. in that yeah. for sure. i mean you can see firsthand from from corin hearing her story it's definitely like it can happen right so uh yeah. nice nice to hear that i will say if you are going to be a self-taught person you have to have a hunger for knowledge and be motivated to constantly be educating mm. yourself in that way. I mean, I think for any designer being on top of what's current, what's happening is really important, but especially if you are a self-taught designer, you have to have mm. that sort of like intrinsic, like I want to learn this so badly that I will take mm. the time out of my day to sit and watch a live stream or um, take some courses online or something mm. like that. Like you know there's got to be some sort of motivation there but it's mm. so doable so doable. i agree no i mean i've always thought i mean i can see we've got jeff as well jeff Milley just mentioned um self-taught here as well so we've got a few folks streaming who are self-taught and i almost feel like it, it's a different level of just a job right you've got to actually love what you do in that regard which is why you have the motive to to otherwise you just wouldn't do it i won't ask what's my opinion on it anyway but um and obviously we're a bit biased because we're designers right but right it's also fun as well you, you have fun with it no um i love yeah. it i would do it for free honestly <laughs> it's it's a 
joy to me. It tickles the itch in my brain that just needs things to be <laughs> in order and look beautiful and yes. it combines all of my loves into one field so it's like i nice. i have such a deep love for graphic design um but yeah nice. just, just to tell you what i just did i just sure. do du- i duplicate and i'll just do it again i clicked this rectangle i hit command c and then i'm on a mac by the way so command c and then shift command v to paste in place so now i have two rectangles and i'm going to select the top one jump into my swatches panel and select the new background pattern that we just made and i think this looks pretty good um we're going to see later if the information covers too much of the background for it to be sized this way I may want to do something like this where I just shrink it down um so you get more of the pattern in the margins but we'll see what happens so for now I'm going to leave it as is I'm going to save my work yes my friends don't forget to save we've uh (laughs) we've had many streams sometimes where it was oh forgot to save even if it's like a one two three four uh yeah an advocate of that but definitely always save your in fact carol i could just see in the chat and save in capital letters with an emoji with with sunglasses (laughs) carol knows what's up i love that i love that and it's such a good time to mention um so about half an hour into the stream already uh, which is ridiculous how quick uh, time goes in the stream. Uh, so if you are just tuning in now, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, and today we have illustrator and graphic designer Corinne Doddlehoff. Uh, and today she is working on an impactful business digital business card using some creative cool patterns. So, uh, so welcome. And again, any comments, get those in the chat. Yeah, I'm very excited for you all to be here. It's truly mind boggling. Like something, definitely something about being self-taught is that mm. the imposter syndrome is so real. Oh, it creeps in for real. It really creeps but, in. But you know, I always find that that even the word imposter syndrome, like I feel like that's what keeps you on your toes a little bit. Like it's almost like a, it, if there's a sense of like that, it's like, well, maybe it's it's not maybe not something you really want to do, but I feel like it's it's, it's healthy to have that little bit of fear. Maybe. Yeah, in like a, just a little bit. I don't bit. know. It's not like a monster now, but just a little bit. Not like no. loads, just a smidge, just a smidge. Just a it's smidge. like it's like the fear is the fact that there's no net you don't mm. if you go to university or you go to to college for art there's automatically a community built into that right if you're somebody who's self-taught you also have to remember that you are building a community either digitally or in person with people very intentionally it's not just something mm. that's automatically given to you with the experience that you're having you have to build it so if you say lose uh, a job or you need references or recommendations like you don't automatically have that as a network or a resource so just mm. making sure that you are you know becoming friends with other artists and designers and bouncing work nice. off of each other and stuff like that very cool well, that's what that's just all about the adobe live community right for for anyone who's very much new to this space it's, it's literally just sharing work and seeing our other cool creatives you know design live on the stream so there we yeah. go yeah and i've definitely seen some people on these streams i have some people in my direct circle who um do adobe live streams all the time like fabiolita is awesome uh, yeah. also I saw fabio in the chat actually hey fabio, I saw, hey, fabio. I saw you pop up shout out to you Um, (laughs) who is also in philly who um comes to a freelance happy hour that my friend nicole salter and i run together um but yeah and there's also people who have done these streams who i would say are huge mentors and inspirations for me like hootspa design company like just getting Mm -hmm. to the point where you feel like the people you're looking up to are also your Mm colleagues it's a nice, nice nice place to be and it helps and it helps that they're really like down to earth people as well right i, I yes, always feel like that it's one thing to have the awesome skill set but if you're actually really nice that's also a bonus as well so, i fully yeah. agree <laughs> we've um we've got a comment here from our awesome moderator jack he said um never underestimate the power of reaching out to someone you want to work with you never know so similar to what you said before when you just reached out for the job and um yeah i mean any sort of uh experiences or stories folks have in the chat um about maybe reaching out to clients you maybe had and just thought i'll just do it why not and see what happens just do and it's it happened let yeah. us know we'd love to hear it in the chat so uh yeah yeah i that's 
honestly happened to me a number of times. Um, I'm very much somebody who believes that you don't get what you don't ask for. Um, mm. I, in fact, this stream happened because I met somebody from the Adobe Live team at a networking event nice. or from the Adobe <laughs> team and said, you know, it would be cool. I would love to do an Adobe Live stream. Uh, and look at you now. <laughs> get in, and here we are and it's happening. Um, and that's not to say that everything that you ask for, you'll get, but sometimes... Mm sometimes things work out really well. Do you know what my 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 grandma always said if you don't enter the raffle you don't win the you don't win the ticket you don't win the ticket you don't win the lottery basically yeah, yeah. it's true you gotta you got enter it to know um we have got a good question here um from jeff and i feel like it actually touches on my kind of craft working in print um are physical business cards still important do you think Corey? oh yeah. you're working in the digital space yeah yeah i would say that they're good to have um, I would say that a digital business card is a need to have. Um, physical business cards, they're great, uh, for instance, to put out at coffee shops or um, someplace where people are picking up physical items, maybe at a shop that your friend runs or on a, a bulletin board, things like that. Uh, printed collateral is, no matter how digital we get, I think printed collateral is going to be really important. But mm. a digital business card is just an essential backup to make sure that when you are caught, because you at some point will get caught without a business card, mm. when you are caught without one, that you are still good. And also, like like I said before, <laughs> for anyone tuning in, these are great to offer to clients. Um, they're super easy to make, especially if you have mm. the brand identity all set. And clients really like don't, they don't know that they need them, but you know, because you mm. are the expert. So, so true. nice. All right. So, what I've done is kind of tilted the pattern in the background. I'm still thinking on it. Um, I do think I might want to make it smaller. So, I will uh, go ahead and adjust that. And something else that I want to do is I've decided I no longer like the three. I want to do two and I want one on top of the other something about me and my work is i like to keep things like i say maximalist minimalist <laughs> i like it to be very <laughs> bold <laughs> yeah very bold and playful and fun and i have a lot going on but also mm. to be crisp and clean and professional um, and especially if you're making a digital business card for yourself you mm want to make sure that you have a a really strong brand identity that you are yeah. um using that accurately represents you as a designer but that all of your printed collateral digital collateral is also in the same vein very yeah. representative of you as a designer so, just on that as well actually i was going to say and this is maybe getting a little bit of peace from the digital space but even when it comes to even print stock as well because i feel like the branding whether it's looking at the type of materials you use you know if you're eco-friendly and that maybe could be part of your brand or part of your kind of aura in terms of what you do that's also quite important i always feel like yeah. with business cards i don't know i kind of geek out when it comes to like the uh the gsm of like actual physicality like tactile so yeah which you can't really necessarily get on a, on a digital sometimes right no. so it's kind of going back to Jeff's point about is it still important that the print, yeah. but uh, yeah. I think so. Around. I always think about that scene in American Psycho for anyone who's ever seen it. Um, <laughs> it's Halloween yeah. season. So if you're going to watch it, yes. now is the time um, where the businessmen are comparing business card, card stuff. Uh, yes. <laughs> and, and it's just, it's such a trip as a designer to watch that. So very um, quickly, just super quick off, please. I literally saw that last week for the very first time. By the way, yeah, yeah. So it's funny. It was so weird you mentioned that because I, yeah. But anyway, off it's, these. Um, awesome. it's, <laughs> it's a, trippy, but awesome. It's a weird movie. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we'll keep it back to design. We'll keep it professional. <laughs> Happy to it. talk yeah, about cool. scary movies with you after. <laughs> um, so what I'm doing is I just created two rectangles, and what I did was I made the stroke the darker black color of the background just to kind of pop it off of the pattern and then what I'm going to do which is something that I love to do it's like a little design touch that yeah. I like is to round the corners and now to make sure that I've rounded my corners the same for both boxes what I'm going to do is select this corner I've got my little corner toggle here that uh, makes 
or breaks the corner. And then uh, when I go up here on my uh, top bar, it says corners and it's gonna give me a pixel radius. So I'm just gonna copy that number. And then when I click on this square, I'm gonna go right back to corners and paste it. And now our rounded corners are the same for both. And that is just, just as a perfectionist, those are the sorts yeah. of things that make me feel good. I'm a, so, I'm a sucker for the rounded corners. Like I feel like it's a bit of a game changer. It can make a difference, right? It's still tiny, but it's a it's a thing that we notice, right? <laughs> it's the things that we notice, and it's also a matter of human psychology and mm. evolutionary psychology and um, soft organic shapes being mm. felt and identified as being safer and more yeah. uh, welcoming and friendlier uh, than mm. sharp corners, which have more of like a corporate professional sort of impersonal mm. feel so just keeping a corner round mm. i love it it's just but it's also so as well like i think it's kind of in keeping with your brand though in terms of your typography because the curved edges so again there is always a yeah. ration that like a method behind the madness which as it yeah. were so uh, yeah for sure a, a thought. so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to pull up a text box and I think what I would like to do is just to copy the text from my website. So I'm going to jump back to my website here. And... Whilst you're uh, doing that, uh, Corinne, we've got a, a lovely comment, which I cannot let this go under the covers because I've got to show no. it. It's a lovely one, actually. It says, uh, this is from Laura Co. who said, I felt so self-conscious of my work. I needed this live stream to help me motivate me. I need to build my, uh, I need to build my network. Hey, that's the kind of comments we love to hear. I love, I that. love that. Thank you, Laura, for sharing. Laura, yeah. I should say, Laura, thank you for sharing that. That's thank a, you so much. Yeah. That makes me happy. Yeah. So I'm you've got, the, you've got just... the energy now to continue the streaming to, to plow through the remaining yes. like hour and a half. <laughs> you've got this. You've I've got just this. been struck by a bolt of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> um, doing it all for you, Lara. So on my website, I've got this tiny little bio that says, I craft designs and illustrations for bold brands, fearless fun seekers, badass bands, and everyone in between. And that okay. is sort of my overall elevator pitch. That is exactly who I design for. And I find that to be a really um, succinct way of putting what I what it is that I do. So I'm going to just use that. And what I'm going to do is just make a quick little text box and then I'm going to align it to center of the artboard. It's so minor, but you know, and then I am obviously no one can read this. So what I'm going to do is move this zoom window out of the way and pull up my font menu. And I'm going to be using, as I mentioned before, but for people who um, are just joining, I am also a font designer. Um, I work with a, a small font foundry called Deli Fresh Type Co. Uh, with a friend named Mitch. Mitch is really the one who does most of the fonts these days, but there are a few coming out soon um, that I've done and a few that exist already that I've done. So this is a font called Libra. It is inspired by the font Gopher, which I love. Uh, my favorite reverse weight font of all time. Um, and here is what it looks like. So I designed this nice. font and I'm very enamored with it. And so I'm going to use it. <laughs> nice. Of course. I mean, you, you build it, you use it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> right. So I just copy and paste it from my website. And I want to sort of adjust how all this looks. I don't have a dash symbol. So there's this crazy box here. And so I don't really like hyphenated paragraphs anyway. So I'm just going to yeah. go over here to paragraph styles and just deactivate hyphenate. Um, yeah. And then I am going to center this paragraph and kind of see how large I want to make the text. I might format it like this. 
whilst you're uh, in the flow, I want to read some of these uh, some lovely comments that are popping through. Yeah. And again, it's always not, we've got some really nice experiences here as well. We've got Michelle who said, uh, I was at a business event and uh, thought of having a digital business card would be enough, but most people actually had printed cards, upside down, smiley face. So yeah, I guess it depends on, and even the type yeah. of folks that will be in their space, right? I guess if it's right. like, you know the type of audience, it, you never know. But um, like you said, it's always nice to maybe have both. So you kind of covered both imagine right. your phone battery dies right there is no digital you're gonna have to go right. back to old school and just open the wallet and exactly and go old school. or if you have if you have clients who are perhaps you work with people who are a bit older and mm. you know i know if i try to airdrop something to my mom for instance it's like what is happening um mm. so you just want to remember like <laughs> i love that <laughs> you know, sorry like, mom <laughs> <laughs> sorry mom if you're watching but you know it's true um, it's all good it's a mom thing i think <laughs> it's a mom thing but Maybe. just the sort of audience that you're going to be interacting with so if you are going to a networking mm. event having those physical cards is just going to be great um mm. because you can just sort of pass them out to everyone and and kind of <laughs> go about it that way but this is mm. definitely such a good fail safe to have um, just like living your everyday life. My partner is currently out on the road touring with a band. Um, Ooh. and yes, he does. So he does sound engineering and design. And so I wanted to make him a digital business card before he left because I was like, you know what, you're going to be busy running around and mm. you're probably going to meet some people and it's going to be really great for you to have something like this. Um, and so mm. far it's come in handy. So that's good. Mm. So now, yeah. So what I am going to I do. I kind of liked it as um, cap, caps look quite, I mean, obviously yeah. it, it's so subjective, but um, caps look pretty. Caps Maybe, look I don't cool know, too. I think I might pull up um, Adobe fonts and see what I would like to do is something similar to what I have on my website where I have coded it so that there are um words that are punched out using a different font um mm. so bold brands fearless fun seekers so i kind of am gonna maybe go with the same sort of vibe um cool. and so i have a bunch of script fonts on here that i love but i am going to just real quickly use the um font filters here to see what i can find for a script nice. uh, because i like the one that i use on my website and that's definitely an option mm. but i have downloaded some really great scripts recently so i'm mm. gonna just see if i can't find one that i really like by the, the way on the uh oh sorry i didn't interrupt you no it's okay I was going to say, well, I can say, uh, going back to your website, you were saying, um, again, I can't kind of miss out this comment. Uh, we've got Monica who's absolutely loving your website. And she's asked, what website builder did you use uh, to create your site? I use exclusively Squarespace. <laughs> Sometimes I will use um, a, like a Shopify if a client really needs me to build a Shopify website. But Squarespace mm. is my my bread and butter. Uh, I love it so much. Um and so that's what I, that's what I use. Oh, I like that nice. actually. Okay. So this isn't quite a script and I actually think it might be a little bit too light for me, mm. but let's see, maybe I can find a heavier script. And the way, just so everyone knows, the way I'm accessing this font menu is I'm just coming up here to the font and under fonts, we've got filters. Um, this is filter fonts by classification, super handy dandy. Illustrator is the best for this. <laughs> um, and it's got sans serif, serif, slab serif, script, you know, your display fonts. I will say that sometimes, especially with display fonts, and if you're somebody who downloads a lot of fonts, like, like me, then you might not see a full and complete list, but it does a really great job of getting you to a good starting point. And you can also kind of set your properties. So like width, uh, line weight, your X height, all that sort of good stuff. And something else I love about Illustrator's font tools is that you have the ability to find similar fonts. Yeah. And so something that I will mention, 
because this just happened and I will, it used to trip me out. I didn't understand why I was doing this, but I know now. So I'm going to start typing in a font that I want to use. This is by, uh, this is called Adult Skate by Yeah Right Type. So it's called YRT Adult Skate. To get there, I typed in, as you can see, YRT. And now what I want to do is see fonts that are similar to this script. And so to do that, I would just come over here to this toothpaste looking equal sign and click. <laughs> oh, it describes it that way before. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bacon or a there toothpaste. Go. I'm going to click cool. show similar fonts. And now it says no results found. And so that at first can be really jarring. Just make sure that you've deleted what's in the uh, search box because if you have something in there already, uh, if it's not part of this list, it's going to say that you have no options. So just make sure that that is empty. Um, I've definitely gotten stuck on that. And you can find some fonts that are, well, that's kind of cute. Oh, that one's kind of cute too. Um, like a kid in a candy shop, right? It's just, there's so many oh. options of just, we could, a whole stream could be dedicated just to browsing around and, and just like experimenting with, with type. It's true. <laughs> I would do a font. I would do a, a live stream where I just go through my font list for sure. <laughs> um, so let's see here. I don't have one in mind, but I don't want to take up too much time. So what I'm going to do is perhaps just use the one that... I have on my website or and whilst you're uh, browsing for that it's a nice time to kind of mention to our uh, lovely audience watching um if you're watching this stream and think oh i would love to be featured on hair or know someone who would also potentially could love to be featured on hair as well uh we've got a little tab in the behance under guest recommendations and you can fill that out and hopefully be featured on her next time so uh yeah if you like what you're seeing you could definitely give us a shout all right, so I think I'm going to use a Salati Italic font. It's a display font called Swear Display. It's a great, it's, a, it's not even technically a script, but the Salati, which is just like an Italic variation, is mm. so cool and wacky and weird. Um, so that's what I'm going to do Um I am extremely nitpicky about kerning, so I am just going to make sure that the spacing in between the words nice. looks... Turn away. Yeah, <laughs> that should be on a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> I bet it is somewhere. Someone's, <laughs> turn not, away. Do it, and I we will purchase five copies <laughs> in all different sizes. Um, I was going to ask, actually, as well, Corey, we haven't even touched on it, and I, I can't believe, like, an hour's gone by and we haven't. Your inspiration, like, where do you tend to find... Your inspiration whether it's the type of fonts you use the color palettes you work with even maybe the clients like where is tell us talk where to is us. it coming what is your from? inspiration <laughs> yeah so i am all over the map my mom and dad are both creative types my mom was an artist so i was raised around a lot of um visual art references so right now i'm really into joan miro and i will always love matisse i don't care how trendy it is i will always just be <laughs> such a fan so there's fine art references that i love uh there's fashion references that i love um i am honestly a huge fan of behance and also pinterest and also um there's another platform that i use sometimes that i'm forgetting the name of that's like like pinterest but different um and like curating mood boards is something that's really fun to me um mm. and also just i am a huge fan of vintage lettering so nice. anywhere that that is vintage signs uh books postcards ephemera um mm. neons like any anything vintage looking i'm always like <gasps> And being from Philly, if anyone's ever been here or is from here, you know that there are just so many incredible vintage signs all throughout the city. Nice. So, yeah, that's oh. where a lot of it comes from. I like to take old and new and try to marry them. So, I mean, you've pitched it to me. I mean, I've never actually been down to the, the Philly side of way, but it sounds like it's quite an interesting sort of design scene out there. Which yeah. Is pretty cool. Yeah. 
Yes. Born and raised. I don't know if on the playground you spent most of your days or <laughs> so it's so bad. I'm sorry. I could oh I'm terrible. Sorry. That's yep. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I'm the worst. All right, there we go. <laughs> We've got some other folks who are throwing in the chat <laughs> the uh, sort of places they tend to find inspiration. We've got design inspiration as well. Um that's always a good one. Um yeah, there's a lot of uh sort of blogs out there and, and things, you know, sort yeah. of creative spaces for us to be inspired. And of course Adobe Live, obviously. So yeah. Yes. I feel like we live in okay. So sometimes it can feel really overwhelming, right? Like uh, being on social media, seeing all these other designers doing things, it can feel or like all of these um reference points it can feel really overwhelming at least it can for me uh, because I I definitely get into comparison mode um, but something that I've realized recently is that it's actually just so liberating to realize that the world is sort of yours to play with and mm. for as much as people might be watching your work and seeing what you're doing like no one is paying that much attention where you can't just have fun with it like it can it can always be fun and it should always be fun 100 oh, so, definitely. this is my favorite of my brand marks is my pink pow and so what i'm gonna do is pop that up here and i like this but i think i might want to make all the punches the same color and loving that okay so now at this point i'm gonna save and then i'm gonna go to view presentation mode just to see what it would kind of look like and it's coming out okay i'm still not completely sold on the font that i chose but that's all right um and actually i am gonna leave it all black for now so the next step is a really fun one and it's we're going to be creating a QR code. And so I am actually going to jump to the internet for this. I'm going to get a... It's a good time to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to mention yeah. now. So we're just over the hour mark now. Cool. Uh, so again, it's we're, mm -hmm. we're blitzing through the stream uh, in a good way, of course. Um, so yeah, again, we've got about another 20 minutes or so. Uh, so any comments, um, you don't want the stream to finish and then think, oh, I should have asked Corinne that question. You've got time, my friends. You've got time. Any comments? Uh, about yeah. her design process, about her as a creative, um, get those in the chat and I will share directly with her. Definitely. So what I'm going to do is enter my, I've come to a QR code generator website. I did just learn that you can do this on Adobe Express, but I don't know how to do it yet. So I'm not going to show you how to do it, but just so we can plug that because obviously this is like an Adobe centric event. Hello. <laughs> so um, I am going to just create a QR code. And if you don't know how to do that, there are some really easy websites that you can mm. kind of find on the internet to make this. And I'm just going to download a JPEG. I know it's in black and white, and I know that I don't want it to stay in that black and white. I want it to be in my color palette. So here's mm. what I'm going to do. If I tried to download this as an SVG or an EPS file, which is what you ideally want to be working with, it will ask me to sign up for a whole thing. And so I'm just going to download the JPEG. It's downloading. And so I'm going to jump back into my Illustrator file here. I think whilst you're doing that, I feel like there was definitely a comment in the chat. And let me know who it was, um, which spoke about QR codes up against bit.ly links. So, you know, yeah. when you like sort of shorten your, um, I think that was just one of the comments. Uh, so uh, do you tend to, because I don't know, like with bit.ly links, they're obviously good because they're shortened, but then they're not customizable. Unless you, I don't know if you can purchase the one, I'm not too sure how that works, but do you ever find yourself having to use like, or do you use shortened of UR links on your cards or is it no I mean, not necessarily yeah so something that I do have is I have an alternate domain name um and so I have corinnedotenhoff.com but I also signed up for designs with he.art because designs with heart is one of my uh like taglines for my brand mm. and so if you go to designs with he.art you should come up to a landing page which is what i use um or i did used to use on my instagram as a as a landing page for that um i just i think qr codes are so much more customizable 
Um, I think you can make them really cute, actually. Like, they don't have to be just stuck on a design. They can be integrated and part of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's just something that um, that I'm partial to. But if you decide to go with a bit.ly link, the other thing is this. And just so you know what I'm doing, I just opened up a document that I <laughs> made because I love fonts so much that I have a document of fonts that I just recently downloaded <laughs> because I will forget wow, about them. <laughs> Dedicated to the cause. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> there's people so, who love fonts and then there's people who love fonts. <laughs> yeah. So I did that forget about this font that I just downloaded called Colette, which I love. I think it's so fun. What I might do is they have a version that's solid and a version that is um, just regular. So I'm just going to kind of tweak a little few of the letters here. Um, just to make it a little more readable, but I do like the filled in look. Okay, cool. So I'm liking that. I think that looks very cute. Um, again, I might tweak it a little bit later. Like if I sit with this and it doesn't, mm. it doesn't resonate with me after a while, I will change it. But for the purpose of this demo, we're going to leave it as is. And so now my QR code should be finished downloading. And what I'm going to do is this. I have a shortcut for placing um, images into my Illustrator, which is I use Shift Command P to place. And then what I'm going to do is place the QR code JPEG. And that looks stuck on, right? Like this is how, I feel like this is how you see most QR codes is they're just like stuck on a design mm. willy nilly. And that makes them, to me, that makes them ugly. So what <laughs> I'm going to do is edit this uh, to be my colors and I'm going to use the image trace feature. The best. And now it's a vector. That nice. easy. And it looks so the same and it will function exactly the same. So now what I'm going to do is I just hit expand. I'm going to go to my magic wand. I'm going to select out that white and I'm going to delete it. Boom. And now and magic. <laughs> now I have a QR code that is my color palette matches the background perfectly. Uh, if I wanted to, I could make it a fun different color. I would say don't make it a light color because that is going to um, not read on a phone as well. Mm -hmm. But you can definitely make it a darker color um, nice. and keep it kind of um, in your color palette. It doesn't have to be black and white. So I can uh, just to add, I was gonna say sorry, just to add, we've um <clears throat> so the very awesome Jack has actually put in the uh chat the um uh code generator that you can actually get on the Adobe. So there we go, because again, there's so many different websites and whatnot, but you can't go wrong if it's all official via the Adobe uh site. So there we go. So uh rather Thank than tracing you. the internet for QR codes, we've done it for you. We've done we put the link in there. So Thank get your codes you, in there and then you can work with it. <laughs> this is why you need community so that they can spot you when you need the exactly. good stuff. Make the place. Okay, so then I just dropped in my Instagram and my website, which again, they shouldn't need because by scanning this QR code, they will be able to um, go to my website. I made it go to corinnedodenhoff.com and all of my handles across all social media is Corinne Dodenhoff Creative. So that is where that will live. And I'm thinking this looks cute. I might, again, mess with this pattern for a second because like this to me looks fine, clean, very neat, uh, sort of minimal. There's not like a ton happening. Uh, but again, like for me, this is more for a client to refer back to. Um, and so it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be crazy. Like this is really just a reference document. Um, so if it's a little more on the minimal side, I honestly prefer that. Um, it's not like it's, it has to be anything that's super duper fancy. You can make, trust me, I have made some digital business cards that are fancy. I'll actually see if I can pull one up on my website. Nice. Just to show you. Um, 
some of my favorite branding I've ever done is for a nail salon here in Philly called Pepper Holidays. So we did physical business mm. cards and then nice. we did canva and then this is a digital business card as well so definitely a lot of stuff going on in this branding it's very maximalist but um you can make them super fancy and um sort of involved or yeah. you can keep them as <clears throat> sort of simple as you want and see i think that looks so much better with a smaller yeah. size pattern so what I'm going to do is save. And again, I'm going to view it as a presentation mode just to sort of see. Nice. Yeah. And so I would not necessarily put this tagline on a physical business card. Um, in mm. fact, I don't. My physical business cards are, again, very minimal. The front just says design is for everyone. And the back has my contact information and my brand marks. Um, but because this is something that uh, you can airdrop or text or email to a potential client that you're talking to in the moment or have mm. them scan the QR code. It's always nice to just have that information because in a dream world, a, a potential client is saving this to their phone. And so let's say they're just scrolling through their images after like a night out or something, they come across your business card and they're like, oh yeah, that's right. I met Corinne and she crafts designs and illustrations for bold brands, fearless fun seekers and everyone in between. And so it just kind of reminds <laughs> Can you imagine them. Just, they just know that straight away. Just, uh, uh, I mean, I really love that. <clears throat> we've, right. um, just to mention, we've got a, a comment, which perhaps maybe, I don't know, I think you mentioned it maybe earlier on, uh, but from Bree, who said, so do you, when it comes to your cards and you're out and about, do you send this to them or do you airdrop it to them or they scan it via your phone? How do you, when you're at an event, how does it work for you? It works whichever way is easiest for you. So I love airdrop. I'm a big airdrop girly. And so, I'm constantly airdropping things to myself and other people. Um, Random would people not, PlayStation. I was going to say, <laughs> would, not re would not recommend just airdropping your information to any old person. But let's say you're talking to someone and it's yeah. just easier for you to, oh, can I airdrop this to you? Um, or you can pull it out and show it to someone. They'll scan the QR code and then it will bring them to your website or wherever you want it to bring them. And they mm. can bookmark that for later in their phone. Um, I will say if you plan on doing that, if you plan on, which you should, saving this in your phone, what mm. I would recommend is making a separate album in your phone that's just for this. That way you're not like scrolling through a million pictures. Who knows what's in there in front of a potential client? You just have it, boom, boom, ready to go. So that's definitely a nice. a little um a little tip from me to you. Nice. We've got a, a lovely comment here from Jeff, who's um, absolutely loving your design. He says, I love the final result. Looks so fun. And on a phone, this would really pop with the balance, contrast, and colors. Thank you we so go. We much. love to hear these comments, my friends. Keep them coming. We do. Keep them coming. I, I, <laughs> I try to keep everything really balanced. Something that's important to me with design work is making sure that the eye has room to breathe, which is, mm. like I said, as a maximalist, minimalist can be uh, tricky just trying to find balance and also keeping things fun and playful at the same time. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I'm personally still not a hundred percent sold on this font, but I think I'm going to leave it for the purpose of the demo. So then what I would do to export is first, I'm going to save and then I'm going to export. You can export for screens. You can save for web. If you are kind of old school, um, I'm going to go to export as and just save this as a JPEG. And I'm going to use my artboards. And that should be good. Color model RGB sounds good. I would say to keep this maybe at like a the quality kind of at an 8 or a 9. It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a 10. It's just going to be on a phone. And then again, since it's for screen... It can be 72 PPI or 150 PPI, but that will also just compress the file down so it's not taking up mm. a ton of room on your phone or your computer. I so was going to say as well, just to add, because I think there's also the benefit, because in my brain I kept thinking, I've never actually done a digital card, but it's always been for print. But I guess if you design a digital card, the joys of knowing that the colors won't change, right? Because it's the colors how you want it to be because you made them on the screen. I guess if you go to print, you never know, depending on the printer, 
yeah you know, the quality of it just comes out ever so slightly so you can't go wrong yeah, right? or it's, margin you know. shifts you know yeah. you can you can try your hardest with print materials to get it exactly right but the print process mm. is such a physical process that sometimes things are just going to shift and look a little hinky and I just ran into that with a client we made a very beautiful sort of art nouveau inspired business card for her and there was one tiny little white line just oh, on the side and it was yeah uh, it was like, oh my god do you know what's um, crazy about that they might not even notice i did did they notice i don't know did i mean they... the client noticed that ah, totally okay. wasn't like my fault or anything um but it, it was just a matter of the printing process kind of mm. throwing a wrench yeah. into the works but S- slip through the cracks is yeah. that something that's that's the i'm gonna say the joys it's not even a joy it's it's the 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 curse the trial and errors of actually print right you just it, it's never 100 percent yeah, yeah. Well, it, sometimes it is but sometimes it's like oh for, for, <laughs> for error. it slips through the cracks <laughs> it's not ideal keeps right. us up at night as designers right <laughs> always it's part of my design stress dreams my recurring stress dreams um and so that is that's really that's really nice. it i just exported it saved it um i always do a double check of anything i save just to make sure mm. that it looks good and that does so my next step would be to airdrop this to my phone save mm. this to an album that i create specifically for digital business cards and then it's there and something else that's cool is mm. you can have an album of cards that are not even just for you like think about how often you have a friend who you wish you could plug for a job or mm. like I have my best friend is a massage therapist. And so anytime I hear someone say, oh, I could so use massage right now, it would behoove me to have her digital business card on my phone to just be like, well, okay. here's yeah. one. It's like akin to sending somebody a um, mm. a profile on Instagram or something. It's just, you know, pointing them in that direction. Mm. So that's that's yeah. nice too and also as well know? i mean it's quite nice because i know you've got obviously your, your two tabs or three tabs so that very first tab we worked with when you had all your, mm-hmm. your assets to play with um if you go back to me have a look it's quite nice to kind of see how they kind of all come together right and kind of build yeah to kind of create that, that final outlet boop so if i dropped this in here which you know what i will i will drop the jpeg in here like mm. this, you can tell this is part of the same brand identity. And I will nice. show you something else while we are here. It is my proposal deck. Ooh. So oh, this you're is treating ha- us, Corin. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the so <laughs> the plot thickens. So this is how I prepare proposals for clients. Uh, it's not yes. a template. I hand built this out, but like you can see that my brand, my brand marks are throughout. My fonts are throughout um Mm. sort of you know the same pattern going on um just to keep things really cohesive Mm. across all forms of you know all phases of the client process really Mm. and it's nice because again I think we maybe for those who came in late in the stream we kind of um established that the style of how you the, the font that you use or even illustrations that kind of thing it has an essence in terms of how you are as a person right whether it's the, yeah. the playfulness or the maybe I mean, not too sharp around the edges a bit more you know quite fun and, and free-flowing um which again i imagine when your clients approach they have this in mind when they oh see they the do design. they definitely yeah. do um most of my clients who come to me now are looking f- for or reference my personal branding as something mm. that they you know as a style that they like for their own branding so that mm. always feels really good you know have you got any um, I mean, i'm quite curious just kind of maybe before we do like a little nice roundup um for anyone who's kind of watching and and obviously maybe maybe stuck in their sort of design flow at the moment now or even trying to do the branding element have you got any advice for those who are kind of coming out in terms of their branding or how they I can do. Kind of, you know almost like be put themselves out there really as it were when it comes to like sharing business cards and digital cards or print because it can be quite daunting um, yeah yeah any advice you can share right so treat yourself like you would treat a client and treat yourself like you would treat a client who has no idea what they want. So, and maybe, maybe you don't work with clients um, specifically for branding, but that's okay. So something that I always do with every client is something called an aesthetic exploration. Um, It's technically got a fancy name 
on, you know, in the agency world, which is called a semantic differential. And I'll show you mm. what that looks like. Yeah. What it is, is a series of prompts that asks you to rank where you fall on a scale of one to six between two polar opposite aesthetics. Mm. So maximal versus minimal, bold versus delicate, analog versus digital. Ask yourself questions like that and you will discover a lot about yourself. My clients love this part of the process because most of the time my clients don't even know what they want. Yeah. Sometimes they do and that's great. But um, when it came to building out my own brand, it can definitely be daunting as someone who is a creative because I love so many styles and want to do so many things and sort of refining and narrowing it down to figure out that direction is mm. really imperative. And this is a mm. great way to do that. So Try, if you can, to make one of these for your own. You can write down lists of adjectives um, that you can think of and then the opposite of that and kind of rank where you fall. Um, something mm. else that you can do is write out your mission statement. Write out a bunch of sentences about yourself. Um, if you really want to, you can do something like, I like to write a bio and then run it through chat GPT to get ideas for words or other key phrases that I might not have thought of before. Um, and mm. that's something else as, as well that you can do um, with a bio that you write about yourself or the work that you do. Something might come up through AI that is really helpful as well. Um, mm. That's a way that I like to use AI anyway. Um, nice. Yeah, Do you know so what came to mind as well? I was going to say, just what? to add, like even the fact that you, you when you share this with your clients and it gets them thinking, because sometimes you get those clients who they know what they want straight away, bish, bash, bosh, good to job, you know, good to go. Yeah. But some that really don't, you have to kind of walk them through and it's a bit of back and forth. And I guess from a design perspective, when they have this kind of almost like question and they go through it, it probably makes your life easier as well because at the end, they've oh. gone through their own journey of knowing what they actually maybe want. And then the process is a bit more, it's in opposed yeah. to, you know, yeah, how, where do we go with this? Could we have nothing to kind of work from? Exactly. Um, Before I was doing mm. this, I would send over first rounds of proofs to people and just be so far off base, not for any, <laughs> not for any mm. sort of um, lack of communication, just for the simple fact that words mean different things to different people. So somebody's version of modern might look completely mm. different from, you know, yours to mine. Um and so having visual representations of what I'm talking about and the adjectives that accompany that imagery and then giving them no choice but to rank themselves on a scale of one to six in, you know, fall somewhere in between. It's just so immensely helpful. I would definitely mm. recommend this as part of anyone's process. Nice. There we go, yeah. my friends. You've heard it. You've heard it first. If you're in that space, you're like, how do I get the most out of my clients? <laughs> Corinne's always, she's vouched for it. She, yeah, do it in I the way that it. she's done it. And actually, uh, and it works as well, because like we said, it's, it just makes your life easier. It makes Something everyone's life easier. easier, right? So then anyway. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've come to that stage where maybe we could do like a very quick final little roundup of what you've done at the beginning of the day and then maybe like end of your website so our folks can yeah. find out more about you. So what did we do at the be beginning of the day? I say like from hours ago, literally what an hour and a half. What did we do an hour What did we do yesterday? <laughs> yeah. What we Let's go did back in time. <laughs> just for, you know, a hot second. What we did today was we created a digital business card with a QR code that uses my personal branding and you can use this for yourself. You can use this as a service offering to other clients. And this is just going to allow you to always have your contact information at the ready, uh, available for anyone who might need it. Um, and so we built this out in Adobe Illustrator. We made a custom little pattern here to go in the background. I uh, used some custom font and used Adobe fonts to find a font that complemented that one. Um, and yeah, that's what we did. Nice. And then here's my little website. You can find me at CorinneDodenhoff.com. There I am. Um, designs with heart, designs for everyone. And a bunch of my work is on here. Mm. You can find Deli Fresh Type Co. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> but uh, Deli... it happens, don't worry. <laughs> it is it is Deli Fresh Type Co. I swear. I think maybe we good. just moved from Wix. <laughs> a glitch um, in the matrix. It's all good. <laughs> oh. Um, and yeah, learn more nice. about me. You can contact me there. I also do education and consulting and all sorts of good stuff. So if you have questions, nice. reach out. 
from here. Nice. And I'm going to end as well. We've got a really nice comment, actually, which I thought is quite nice to kind of end. And it also kind of sums up how many folks have actually been inspired today by your by your work process, oh Corinne. Uh, so you've got Michelle. He said, I've been working on my branding for my new business uh, past months. Website almost done. Now working on launching my business on Instagram to thinking exactly about... Uh, Business to business Instagram and thinking exactly about this. Perfect timing. Thanks for the inspiration. Yay, so uh, I'm glad that we've been able to uh, send some good vibes and inspiration your way. Um, yeah. So Corin, I'm going to do a nice little wrap up now to end because uh, oh. it's been so cool to, to host you. Have you enjoyed it? Thanks, Karen. Oh my gosh, this has been such a dream. Yeah. So happy nice. about it. We've abridged it. And uh, yeah, it's been an awesome, awesome to host you. And uh, my friends, so stay tuned. Uh, we're going to have very shortly the Adobe Font Show with the awesome Ben and Aride uh, Ariande. Uh, on today's episode, we're involving concert poster type battle and design challenges for you lovely folks. So, uh, so cool. until then, my friends, uh, we'll see you very soon. Oh, and also thank you. Of course, I want to say thank you to the Adobe Live team. <laughs> They've been running away. Of course, thank you to the Adobe Live team and thank you to everyone who's involved as well in the chat. Um, it's been an absolute dream. So, uh, Corin, yeah. pleasure to host you. Until Thanks, next time, Karen. my friends, we'll see you very soon. All right. Bye. Ciao, ciao.